Okay, this is video five for chapter five, and in this one we're gonna be using a couple new different methods for solving proportions. Goes with section 5.4, there's the pages. Um, so in this section we're gonna be using multiplication and mostly this one, cross products to solve proportions. And we're probably gonna need a calculator for this one. These are ones we probably won't do in our head. So, uh, to continue our list, in 5.3 we said there were two methods to kind of do it in your head with those arrows where we showed the arrows of how to get a missing number. We also set up that tic-tac-toe table to keep things lined up. And in this section we're going to be learning two new strategies. So here's the first one, to multiply. Just use multiplication. When I see a proportion like this one, um, I could multiply both sides, right? If I'm solving for C, I could multiply both sides by 12. That would cancel that out and give me C by itself. It's one way to get the variable. And now I just have to do this math. So 12 divided by three would give me four, and then multiply it by the five, I get 20. So, cool. One way is to just multiply until you get the variable by itself, just like this was a, if it was an equation. Multiply by 6, cancel, cancel, I get W by itself. Now I just have to do the math. So here it looks like it'd be easier to do 6 times 6, and then divide it by the 9, so I get W is equal to 4. Or here, trying to get A by itself, so multiply by 15. So again, a calculator might help you. I might do 15 times 12, that's 180, and then divide it by 10, so I get 18. All right, you try number three. Just work out, get y by itself, and then we'll check it and move on to the next strategy. Okay, so check those answers here. The last one I got, y is three. Um, that's one strategy, but most of the time you're probably gonna use this one. For the rest of the chapter, a lot of people like to use cross products or cross multiplying. So, um, solve each proportion using cross products. Here's what that would look like. If I take the cross products, four times u, and then the other cross products, remember these diagonal numbers, three times six, and I set them equal to each other. Now, it doesn't matter if I write four u equals 18, or if I write 18 equals four u, they're gonna give me the same answer. Either way, I get an equation, and I'm gonna solve it for u. So divide by four on both sides, and I get u is equal to 4.5, okay? If I solve this one, I'd get the same answer. So it doesn't matter which order, you're just taking the two cross products, so like here, 13 times 12, I might have to work that out. And then, so 156, and it's equal to four times h. Again, get the h by itself, so do whatever you need to do to cancel out and solve for the variable. And I would get 156 divided by four, 39. So that's cross products. Find the cross products um, and then solve for the variable. You do need to show your work, so you do need to show the equations. Um, try four and five right now, and then we'll come back and talk about six. So pause it, see if you got it down. Okay, there's my answers for uh, number four and number five there. Let's talk about number six. Here I am still going to do cross products, but if you notice I have z plus one on the bottom here, I have to multiply that all by 15. So I'm going to do it on this side, I have a little bit more room. It's going to look like that, where I actually have to distribute it uh, to work that out. And then on the other side, here I have 40 times 6. So take a second to distribute. 15z plus 15 and the 40 times 6. So then it's just a two-step equation. Minus 15 from both sides, then divide by 15 on both sides, and I get z is equal to 15. So even when you see something like this, don't freak out, it just means you have to distribute it and then work it out, solve for your variable. Just make sure you actually show all the steps and all the work. Um, don't think if you can kind of do it in your head or type numbers into the calculator that you don't have to show it. It needs to all be written down on your paper. So, uh, just a quick reminder, all proportions, right, are a ratio equal to another ratio. So they require four different numbers 
right? One fraction or ratio equal to another fraction or ratio is four parts total. So anytime when we do story problems like we're about to start, you need to figure out what those four numbers are. They should give you three of them, and then the one that's missing is going to be your variable or your x. It could be anywhere. This could be the one I'm searching for. This could be the one I'm looking for. It doesn't matter where it is, but you're going to just use cross products to find the one that's missing. So we're going to do a bunch of word problems together. Um, we're going to set up our own proportions, make sure the labels are all lined up, right? Line up the labels. You could write it in a different way than me, but you should uh, come up with the same answer. And um, I've left some of the numbers out on your worksheet, so just fill them in. When you see the questions up here, right, fill the numbers into the problems, and then we'll work it out together. So 36 pencils are packed into three boxes. How many pencils are packed into five boxes? So I have pencils, boxes, pencils, and boxes. Doesn't matter whether your labels line up this way or if your labels all line up this way. Maybe you want to use a tic-tac-toe board to help you, but we got to get everything lined up to set up our proportion the right way. So I'm just going to start with 36 pencils. Go into three boxes. There's two of my numbers. That's a ratio that I do know. And then how many pencils are packed into five boxes? Well, the five boxes needs to line up with this boxes. And pencils would line up here with pencils, but that's what I don't know. How many pencils? I'm not sure. So there's my proportion. Now you can either use arrows, do it mentally in your head, or cross products. Um, looks like for me, this one's pretty simple if I just want to multiply by 12 and multiply by 12, I would get my answer, right? So that would be 5 times 12. 60 pencils would be in 5 boxes. Okay, so the key here, line up your labels, and then pick one of the strategies to find the variable, the one that's missing. Let's try these two. So again, fill in the blanks on your problem, and then we'll work it out. In 8 seconds, an engine turns over 734 times. How many rotations in a minute? Hmm, so careful here because I have to look at my labels. I have seconds, I have minutes, and I have rotations or turns. Uh, well, I know I need my labels to match, so let's turn them into, for seconds, let's turn this into seconds. Instead of asking about a minute, since we need the labels to match, let's do this with 60 seconds. So, 8 seconds, an engine turns over 734 times. That's a ratio that I do know. So always start with the ratio you know. Doesn't matter which way I set it up. 8 seconds, 734 rotations or times. And then they say how many rotations. Ah, so this is what I don't know. I don't know how many rotations here. In a minute. And we said we were going to use 60 seconds for a minute so that the units all matched. So double check. Seconds, seconds, rotations, rotations. This is the part I'm looking for. And then either use cross products, probably easiest for this one, or, yeah, nothing easy in your head, so cross products. So 734 times 60, I'm just going to write it down and then we'll check it. So I just did the math to get my cross products here, divided by 8 on both sides to get x by itself, and I got 5,500, and I just need a label. So right here, because I labeled it, I know I'm looking for rotations, 5,000... 500 rotations. Yep, that's what we got. All right, so try the next one. Car uh, with a full 13 gallon tank can go 359 miles. So, right there, it looks like I'm making a ratio between gallons and miles. What is its gas mileage? Hmm. Well, here I have to think about what mileage means gas mileage. That means how far can it go, how many miles can it go on one gallon of gas? So, we said that we need four numbers to set up a proportion. Three of them have to be given in the problem. Looks like I know 13 gallons goes with 359 miles, and then I don't know, I'm looking for how many miles I can go on one gallon. So I set it up here, gallons over miles, gallons over miles. Here's what I'm trying to find. Use your cross products, so 13x equals equals the 359 here, then I just divide it by 13 on both sides, and I get x is equal to 27.6, but I need a label. Well, I was looking for miles. How many miles can I go on one gallon? So this must be miles. I can go 27.6 miles in one gallon. Okay, so let's keep going. What if they give me a unit rate? 
these can seem a little confusing. So your parents' car gets 27 miles to a gallon, kind of like the last example. How many gallons would it take to go 85 miles? So if you read this, you're thinking, I only have two numbers. That's not enough to set up and solve a proportion. But 27 miles to a gallon. There's another invisible number in here, to a gallon, to one gallon. So I actually have 27 miles, one gallon, how many gallons, so this is what I don't know, trying to find how many gallons it would take to go 85 miles. Check your labels, miles over gallons, miles over gallons. I'm going to cross multiply and get an answer. So finish this one and number four. Let's look at number four real quick too. How far can you get on 12 gallons of gas? Well, same thing. I still have this unit rate, 27 miles on one gallon. Now, how far can I get on 12 gallons? How far can I get? I don't know. I don't know how miles I can go how many miles on 12 gallons, it would look like that. So just finish cross multiplying both of these and we'll check what we get. Okay, so I just finished showing the um, work for my cross products and I got this. We got an answer of, since I was solving here for gallons, 3.14 gallons. Or in the next one, I got 234, but I was searching for how many miles I could go, 234 miles. Okay, the next three we'll set up together quick and then you can just finish the cross multiplying and see what you get for an answer. So, Jeremy makes $2,860 a month on his job. How much does he make in a year? Sorry, that's irrelevant information. You need to know that there are 12 months in a year. So, I can set it up. I know how much money he makes in a month, right? One month. There might be an invisible one in there. So, 2860 in one month. How much does he make? Hmm, I don't know. That's my X, right? In a year, and we said that was 12 months. The units have to match. So double check, I have dollars over months. This is gonna be how many dollars in 12 months. Let's set them up and then you can go back and work them out. He works 20 days every month. How much does he earn for one day work? Well, again, I have my unit rate of this in one month. Turns out that is 20 days, so really if I need my units to match, I should turn this into 20 days so that I can do the whole problem in days. How much does he earn? Again, that's what I don't know. I'm trying to figure out in one day. So sometimes you'll have to change the units. Like here we had to change years to 12 months, or here I have to change a month into 20 work days. So dollars over days, how many dollars in one day? And then this one, again, same number for what he makes in a month. How long will he need to work to earn $15,000? Okay, well, that much money in one month. How long will it take him? Hmm, that means this time I'm trying to find the time, how many months, to earn $15,000. The only trick is to make sure your units match up. Money over months, how, um, I know how much money, so how many months will it take? So go back and just finish your cross products for each of these and get an answer and then we can check them. Okay, all I did was finish the cross products, right? Multiplying these, multiplying these, and then solving for X. So I got $34,000, that's how much he could make in a year. Um, when I just figured out X here, he makes $143 a day with a label, put the labels and units on it. And then when I solve for this X, how many months would he have to work to make $15,000? months. So there's three more for you to practice. Um, looks like in this one we're doing papers and minutes. Just be careful here if you have different units. Um, find the unit rate and then answer these two. So set them up and then uh, use your cross products to find what's missing and then we'll check them um, after you pause and work them out. Okay, go ahead and check. Um, here's my unit rate. Papers per minute, so papers divided by minutes and I got this. Next one I had to find how many papers can she grade in an hour. So that's what I was trying to find. Set it up, solve for the X, 288 papers in an hour. And then the last one, how many minutes? So here's my variable, 
Once I set it up, papers per minute, papers per minute, solve for the x here, 41.66 minutes. All right, thank you. That's the end of video five.